The first video was how to get to this website. This video is going to talk about uh, is an interactive uh, SKU T plot. Here's a Java plot real quickly. May second again. There's a six at this time of year. There's a six hour uh, offset from Zulu time. So twelve o'clock today was eighteen hundred hours. Site is BDU. Go to Java plots. And so here's our skew t chart real quickly. Let's summarize what the so we have. Um, of course, the temperatures is on the bottom, but it's skewed to the right. That's why it's called skew T. Pressure is on the vertical axes. It's a logarithmic pressure. We have the gray. <clears throat> the gray, they're not really gray in here, but these going from left to right here is a constant mixing ratio. The cyan line, or the these blue lines, are the dry adiabatic lines. This red line is the atmospheric uh, prediction temperature. So, and the blue is the dew point. Um, so that's a summary of that. Some little tricks with this program is right click. So what we want to do is look, get a little better definition of our site, which is at 5300 or 5300 altitude approximately so that would be down here I'm just moving the mouse down 5300 about and our temperature today was about we're about in here so let's see if I can just window this area yeah just left mouse click and window boom and now we can talk a little closer about what's happening here so this is the beauty of this uh, interactive program. Here's our skew T chart. So if we wanted to try to calculate our thermal index for the day, the red, it's already drawn for us, the environmental line. So what we would do is guess our temperature. Let's say in the afternoon it's going to be 67, 69 degrees in the afternoon. You notice right here where my mouse is, it's giving me all this data, 67F, 67 Fahrenheit. I click. And it draws the um, our our lifting line, I guess is what it's called, uh, and that travels along the dry adiabatic line. And what's cool about it? So it traveled up here, intersects the atmospheric line, which I believe. Oh no, we get we get a cloud base from a different method. Cloud base would be yeah from here. Oh, yeah, it's something else. Never mind. So let's say we had that. Let's just say it was 67 degrees. So the the difference between so if you take the environmental line, which is the red temperature, and subtract that from our forecasting line, <clears throat> that difference is called the thermal index. And so a negative number is good because we want we want. Uh, our dry adiabatic line to be greater than our environmental <clears throat> and that gives us a lifting index so let's say it was at this altitude this mouse is telling me the altitude at 11,000 feet or 11,328 um, I got a difference here I'm at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and I travel over here to this one which is 37 that's 5 degrees difference so I have a thermal index of negative 5. And what's, what's cool about this, um, okay, so that's good. So just a couple things to note is that a negative 2 centigrade is about minimum of what it takes to sustain a plane in flight. Of course, it depends on the, on the plane and everything and the weight, but that's just a good rule of thumb. Or negative 3 degrees Fahrenheit would be kind of sustainable lift. So a negative five sounds like a good soaring day. The other thing we're looking for on this chart is a, uh, what we like to know is a K index, which is the instability index. So notice on the right hand side, they've it's computed for me here, the KI 
of 8 right there when I move my mouse away. So that sounds pretty good if you look at the definition. So anything from 5 to 15 is good conditions, although it's uh, clouds unlikely. So it may be hard to find thermals. Uh, better, It's even better between about 15 and 20 because <clears throat> there may be partly cloudy and that will be better thermal indicators on a 15 to 20 day um, a, a K index of 15 to 20, a stability index. Um, also, wind is located on the side. Notice as I move the mouse, it shows me the uh, wind direction and the knots. So that is kind of nice. I'm going to start using this for predicting wind speed down at uh, surface elevation. Typically in Denver, I'm around 5280 or 5300. So it was predicting at an 8 o'clock or at 12 o'clock that it would be um, it would be 70 um, from angle 77 at zero knots. Not very windy today. So I talked about the thermal index, the K index, which is the stability index, and the last index we like to know is the lifting index. And that is the basically the thermal index at half the atmosphere, which is which is 500 millibars, or basically um, 18,000 feet, and it's given us a lifting index over here of two. And so we can kind of check the math on that a little bit. So it's a positive two, so that means it's there's no lift at 18,000 feet. I move my mouse over here, and yeah, right about in here is 18,000 feet, and we've got our our dry our surface or a dry adiabatic growth, I don't know what you call this purple line, um, is on the left side of the atmosphere line, which is red, which means it's stable and there's no lift at 18,000 feet. So that, so there's about a two, a, you know, two, a value of two between the temperatures at that elevation, which is about, which is what agrees with their lifting index of two. The other thing that would be fun is to predict cloud base. And the cloud base is found by starting at our dew point and traveling in a straight line parallel to the gray line, which is the constant mixing ratio line, and continue that on up until it intersects the atmosphere or the environmental red line which is approximately where this black bar is. So I think that's what that black bar is indicating. So that black bar would be the uh, cloud base. So with this chart, I'm able to predict whether or not it's a good soaring day. Um, if I was to write my own forecast, I'd say we've got good lift. Uh, you know, our thermal index is negative five or so. That's good lift from, from the surface up to about maybe 14,000 feet. We've got cloud base at approximately 16,000 feet and then no lift above the clouds, which makes sense. So that would be a good soaring day up until about 14,000 feet. Let's go.